So, that's the outline of my presentation. So the role of Doppler's uh, pregnancies, uh, they are mainly, they play a pivotal role uh, in antenatal monitoring of high-risk pregnancy with the aim of uh, preventing uh, perinatal death and handicap. And the main Doppler's which are utilized in surveillance of these high-risk pregnancies include the uh, umbilical artery Doppler, uh, which is usually done in a free loop and should be low resistance uh, if it is normal. Then we've got the MCA, uh, which is the second image there, uh, which is done on the middle cerebral artery and should be high resistance if everything is normal. Uh, then it's done uh, on the greater wing of the sphenoid bone with a gait of two millimeters. Then we've got the ductus venosus, which is the third image, which is done as the uh, umbilical vein turns into the portal sinus. It's one of the shunts in fetal circulation, and it should also be low resistance. Then we've got the uterine artery dopplers, uh, which should also be low resistance. They are done uh, as the uterine arteries from both sides uh, go and supply uh, the placenta. Uh, so, uh, so the surveillance tools uh, are a combination of the biometries, uh, which are the measurements uh, of the fetal head, abdomen, uh, and femur. So with a correctly dated uh, pregnancy, you can, uh, there are some nomograms, as you can see on the first image, it, it's showing us some nomograms and uh, actually locating where that, uh, those particular parameters are falling on. Then we've got the umbilical artery Doppler, <coughs> the MCA, uh, the ductus venosus, uh, amniotic fluid assessment, is also another parameter which is used uh, in assessment uh, assessment uh, of fetal well-being, as well as the CTG, fetal CTG. Okay, so that was the slide there. So the next slide uh, is to do uh, this is just uh, emphasizing the point I was talking about. Uh, the Dopplers also have got uh, nomograms. As you can see, we've got two graphs showing the resistive index and the positivity index uh, of the uh, umbilical on the left column and the MCA on the right column. So these ones were falling within the normal ranges. So in high-risk pregnancies, uh, Dopplers play a pivotal role in the high-risk uh, women, and they are usually most important after the age of ability, because uh, interventions can be made uh, to improve the outcome uh, of those pregnancies after the age of ability. Uh, Dopplers also play a pivotal role as a surveillance tool. So the Doppler, which I mentioned earlier on, the umbilical artery Doppler, the uh, two weekly growth scans, biophysical profile, as well as the CTG play uh, an important uh, role in the surveillance of these high-risk pregnancies. So the surveillance goals include assessing risk and extent of hypoxia acidosis, uh, assess the risk of stillbirth, Assess the rate of clinical deterioration, uh, planning of the interval of the next visit. So they need close monitoring these uh, high risk pregnancies in order to uh, establish the appropriate timing of the delivery, not too late, not too early. So the clinical applications uh, of the Dopplers include screening. Uh, so in the first trimester, there is screening for preeclampsia. Uh, it's also done uh, during the anomaly scan. So the 
uterine artery dopplers are done and they are put in the nomogram if they are high then some interventions can be done which include uh, aspirin in the first trimester baby aspirin uh, or in the second trimester uh, calcium then uh, there is also screening of uh, fetal growth restriction using these uh, dopplers aneuploidy uh, as well as cardiac defects uh, the ductus venosus then there is also the prenatal diagnosis uh, of fetal anemia uh, fetal growth restriction uh, uh, TTS uh, twin to twin uh, transfusion syndrome TEPS uh, TREP uh, as well as surveillance of these conditions. And it starts from the first trimester all the way uh, up to the time determination of delivery, and the decision to deliver is made. So the uterine artery dopplers, uh, as well as the ductus venosus, uh, play an important role in preeclampsia, FGR, uh, aneuploidy, cardiac defect. So usually if the reversal flow in the A wave of the ductus venosus is a, it's a pointer towards uh, potential uh, cardiac defects, so they, they need to be scheduled for a formal echo, fetal echo. Then the same applies for the PSV, uh, as well as the PI values uh, of the umbilical artery doppler, the MCA. Uh, as well as the PSV in conditions like uh, preeclampsia, FGR, uh, as well as fetal anemia, and the TTS, as well as the selective fetal growth restriction in multiple pregnancies. Uh, the umbilical artery doppler, MCA, and DV, ductus venosus, uh, play an important role in fetal growth uh, diagnosis. Uh, surveillance and TTS steps progression, whether it's progressing well, uh, there's an improvement or there might be need uh, to intervene. So I'll mainly be uh, focusing uh, on one of the conditions which is very prevalent, especially in our nation. And uh, I also trust in sub-Saharan Africa, which is fetal growth restriction. So, uh, Basically, there are two types of uh, FGR which are categorized uh, on the time in which they are okay. If they are okay before 32 weeks, they are referred to as early onset uh, fetal growth restriction. If it occurs after 32 weeks, it's termed late onset. Uh, so these ones are associated uh, with uh, an estimated fetal weight, which is below the 10th centile, and will be restricted uh, diffusion and diffusion across the placenta which results in reduction in the growth velocity, uh, mainly of the AC, and can also involve the HC. Uh, so research has shown uh, that uh, SGA, fetuses, will undergo surveillance and timely delivery, the four to five-fold reduction in mortality and all severe morbidity before birth. So the early onset, uh, as I said, uh, it, it is mainly a, a perfusion placental uh, defect due to decreased uh, villus, uh placental vasculature, uh, which occurs early on in pregnancy. Uh, the key indicators of progression of placental dysfunction uh, and advancing fetal deterioration include uh, the increase in the PI uh, of the umbilical artery which will subsequently also affect uh, the venous Doppler indices as the, uh, uh, as the condition deteriorates. And we usually have about uh, two to six weeks for early vascular responses to manifest. So we have enough time to see the progression in order to make the timely delivery. They are more on the chronic side. They're not something that just happens acutely. So uh, how do we conduct uh, surveillance of these uh, early onset FGR in our units in Zimbabwe? 
So we use the FMF uh, protocols. Uh, so in, in the first scenario, if the, there is just estimated fit our weight, which is below the 10th centile and the Dopplers are normal, uh, we do uh, growth scans, including the Dopplers uh, every fortnight. Uh, then scenario two, if we have got high ab abnormal Dopplers in the form of a high PI in the umbilical artery, we do or alternatively, if there is also a redistribution in the MCA, which means there is a low PI in the MCA, less than the fifth center will do weekly Dopplers. Then the third scenario, if we have got absent or, or if first and diastolic flow in the umbilical, we'll do Dopplers every three days. Uh, so the frequency, uh, we also perform CTG. The frequency is done uh, so that uh, the timely interventions can be conducted. So the main decision to deliver when it is early onset uh, fetal growth restriction is based on the ductus venosus. So even if we've got a reversal of flow in the umbilical or a low PI in the MCA, the decision to deliver before 32 weeks is based on the ductus uh, venosus uh, Doppler. So if the A wave becomes absent or reversed, then delivery is uh, recommended uh, urgently. Uh, within 24 hours. And usually these women who already have been administered uh, with antenatal steroids. So the, the images on the right just show deterioration of the Dopplers uh, from, of the data venosus uh, Doppler from a reduced A wave to a vessel and even further a vessel. Then for the second category, which is uh, the late onset, which occurs after 32 weeks. So early onset, we try to push for the ductus venosus. Why? Because uh, we are trying for the fetus to gain more weight before they are delivered. So as long as the ductus venosus uh, still has uh, some A wave, we will still continue, uh, but with close monitoring, uh, the frequency of the Doppler's uh, every three days, it can be even every day uh, if the West comes to the West. As long as there is still uh, some flaw in the A wave, we will continue so that the, uh, the fetus gains more weight, which will also improve uh, their outcome. So the every uh, gram which they gain improves their outcome if they are delivered. Then for late onset uh, FGR, it's mainly a, a villus diffusion uh, abnormality. And to a lesser degree, uh, it, uh, it, it involves perfusion, which means you might actually have a normal umbilical artery flow, but it will be flagged that there is something wrong if there is redistribution in the NCA, which means blood is not being chanted to the uh, brain. Uh, because uh, there is deterioration, and uh, this usually results in, in fetal hypoxia or acidosis. So uh, late onset can also manifest uh, through the high uh, uterine artery dopplers. The um, uh, umbilical arteries can be normal, uh, or they may be mildly abnormal. Uh, but the MCA usually will show uh, redistribution the MCA because the MCA is an indicator of the oxygen situation. If the baby is not, the fetus is not happy, uh, it will complain and it will show fire uh, decreased uh, uh, positivity index or a low PI. So the situation which we want to avoid is that of hypoxia or acidosis, and it usually manifests with the uh, uh, normal uh, umbilical artery dopplers. There will be brain sparing, which is the redistribution. Uh, there will be non-reactive CTG, absent breathing uh, movements. There will be magnetic fluid, which is less than uh, two centimeters. That will be oligohydramnios or even anhydramnios. Then we've got 
uh, when it reaches the, the acidosis uh, stage, there will now be abnormal uh, DV Doppler. And on CTG, uh, the FTV will be less than uh, 3.5. And if the pH becomes less than uh, 7.1, then there'll be absent movement and absent tone. So that's the biophysical abnormalities. So in the uh, late onset, the surveillance is almost the same to fortnightly growth and Doppler scans. Uh, if the Dopplers are normal, uh, if we've got high PI weekly Dopplers with biophysical profile, and if there is low MCA PI redistribution, uh, as well as the infected uh, uh, cardio, um, the CPR, cerebral placental ratio, then they will be seen every uh, two to three times per week. So the decision to believe after 32 weeks is a bit different from the first one uh, of the early onset. We said the early onset is done uh, when there is absent or uh, reverse our flow in the AUF. But for late onset, because the baby would have already gained uh, acceptable weight, uh, if there is abnormal uh, uh, the reversal of flow or absence of flow in the end diastolic uh, of the umbilical this time, then we will recommend delivery uh, within 24 to 48 hours. But if the Dopplers remain normal, the delivery scheduling is between 38 and 39 weeks. So that's just a summary of the algorithm uh, of the fetal growth restriction uh, surveillance using Dopplers, uh, which I had just uh, explained before, just a summary of everything which I said uh, before. So in conclusion, the Dopplers uh, play a pivotal role in the screening, diagnosis, and surveillance of high-risk pregnancies, and assist, as we saw in that uh, earlier slide about that. Uh, uh, some of the researches we showed that there is a four to five-fold uh, improvement in the perinatal uh, outcome if there is proper surveillance uh, and uh, timing of the delivery to be appropriate. It will be a lead to improved maternal and perinatal outcomes. Thank you. That concludes uh, my talk, and I would like to acknowledge uh, the Fetal Medicine Foundation, Zimbabwe, uh, as well as the Fetal Medicine Unit team uh, at the central hospitals, as well as the uh, team, uh, the Fetal Clinic team. Thank you.